hey lovelies welcome back to my channel it's been forever i've been meaning to film this for like ever so today i'm just going to be making this video because i've got the prompt from my spirit and then today being sunday there was a preaching from church that made me say i must film this video today yes i must film this video today so let me quickly bring out my notes from church because this is about to get very spiritual guys okay so um in today's service uh pastor emmanuel Aaron did the preaching about the halo effect the halo effect which practically means the unconsciousness of a man where they use one attribute one beautiful attribute about someone to give them a judgment like you just dive into conclusions that this person is perfect because they look good or uh, this person is you know a good person because they are spiritual so that is the halo effect so one of the reasons i'm talking about this is let me give you a quick story about what happened to me sometime in school so i have a few exes i mean we all agree that we are nobody's ex but there is this guy that i had the misfortune to curse when i was in school and guys should i tell the story okay <laughs> so this guy had looks to die for and i'm not even going to lie i was very sure like you know you know when you're looking at somebody you know it's the looks that is deceiving you but you're like mm, he's a good person you know i can from from his six packs i can see his i can see his heart i feel like he's you know a good person anyways guys Whenever I think of that guy right now, the only thing that comes to my mind is this scripture. Let me quickly find it. Proverbs 26, verse 24 to 26. Let me read. Enemies disguise themselves with their lips, but in their hearts they harbor deceit. The Though their speech is charming, do not believe them. For seven abominations fill their hearts. Their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Guys, this guy in question, for the sake of this story, let me call him John. <laughs> so I met John back in the days when, you know, we're still modeling. I mean, I feel like everybody in the university or that went to the university when I went to university had a modeling time in their life. So I met John back in the days when we were modeling back at Portacourt and John, you know, had all this hefty looks, fine boy looks, you know, he was one of the top models anyways. In as much as people were looking up to them, those of us that were still like ah, the fine boy, we knew. Anyways, after the period I had met John, everything about my modeling career and all of that, you know, was washed down the drain because I had one stupid encounter of someone who was trying to blackmail me into sleeping with them. And I decided that I'm not doing modeling again. Let me go and fix my books, you know? Anyways, fast forward to three years later. Yes, three years later. And John and I crossed sites again uh, in an industry event. And you're like, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, 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 yaka, 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 yaka. And we exchanged numbers. And we're like, oh, we're going to catch up. We're going to... Anyways, we start to chat on Instagram. And guys, there was nothing in this chat. Though. I See, I stand my ground. My friends that know and have, we are involved in this conversation know that in the last how many years this happened. I think this happened as far back as 20, 2018, 2019. As far back as 2019 to date. That's... <laughs> that's like five years now i still stand my ground that there was nothing in this chat this chat that caused issues anyways at the time i was seeing someone and you know i was chatting with john platonically because we were friends from way back and you know there were a bit of you know chit chats you know going on here and there anyways the person i was seeing at the time uh i mean how do I put this? Anyways, <laughs> let me skip all this part and get to the part where 
I eventually uh, break up with this person I'm seeing, or he breaks up with me because he feels there's something more than what he saw in the chat going on between John and I. And I mean, he felt a bit insecure. And to be fair, if you see John, if you see John, you feel insecure. Anyways, the young man felt insecure and he broke up. Totally understandable. I felt hot at the time, you know, I felt bad, but then I moved on, you know. Anyways, then my conversation with John continues. And um, for, for context sake, I know some people are going to be like, how did he know? How did he see my chat with John? I got robbed at gunpoint at some point and I had to use his phone, the person I was seeing to reach out to my family and close friends. So because I was logged into Instagram to be able to send those messages well, and I was chatting with John on Instagram, I also got to tell John, oh, I got robbed. Please don't call my line, don't send all this kind of stuff. Anyways, I slept off and I woke up the next morning and I saw the chat. I, I saw that he had read the chat anyways. Well, okay, then, um, okay, where did I stop? Okay, yes. Anyways, after I had broken off with this person and John and I had had a conversation again, one thing led to the other and I'm like, oh, he was like, oh, what about your boyfriend? I'm like, oh, we're no longer together. and. He kept asking what happened, what happened, what happened. And I eventually told him, well, you happened. You're the cause of my problem. <laughs> you, you're the reason it went that way. And John, you know, goes on to, you know, talk and talk and talk and lie and lie and lie. I mean, for the two or three months, we eventually started, you know, seeing, dating, not dating, seeing. We are like friends that knew they liked each other, but, you know, nothing defined. And in that three months of being close to John, I realized that this guy can lie. And his lie is not ordinary lie. His lie is all this very sweet lie. But by the time they tell you the lie, even you, you're like, mm, you know, you, you believe that there's, there's some people that when they talk to you, right, you know the truth, but you doubt yourself. <laughs> that is the kind of person he was. Anyways, I, I mean, the basics of all of this, you know, let me redirect it back to the word of God, is that the halo effect, as uh, Pastor Emmanuel Irene rightly said, is a problem. I mean, it has its advantages, but it's a problem because as a human being, you subconsciously uh, judge people by your first instinct or the first time you cite them. And you mistake someone's quiet look to mean they are good people, or you mistake someone's, you know, calmness to mean they are not bad people anyways. But you get in touch with them personally, and you see that there is so much more. Someone being quiet doesn't make them husband material. Someone being spiritual doesn't make them husband material. There is so much more. I mean, the material goes yards and yards and yards. One yard should be spirituality, while the next yard should be, you know, physical appearance. The next yard should be caring or kind. The next yard, I mean, I don't expect that you're buying one yard of, you know, husband material anyways. So guys, that is basically what I want to talk to us about today. I hope you learned something from this, my short life encounter and you know you're able to understand the message i am trying to pass through it thank you so much for watching i am so grateful to be back to be on your screens kindly like subscribe and comment if you had had any opportunity or any situation in your life where you experienced the halo effect so guys thank you so much bye